Marks and Spencer's laid back IPA. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got a can of the Laidback IPA, which is been, which has been brewed for Marks and Spencers by the Adnams Brewery up there in Southwold on the um, east coast of the United Kingdom. Uh, Adnams are quite a good brewery, actually. Uh, I reviewed the Southwold Bitter the other day. It was in doing a comparison with the Witchwood Goliath bitter and the Adnams was just streets ahead of it in terms of flavour and well everything basically and uh, they've brewed quite a few good beers Adnams uh, the uh, Ghost Ship is a pretty good one the broadside that they do is a really nice ruby ale which is available all year round and I've had it on draft as well Witherspoons do it it's lovely, really like that. And uh, they've done this one for uh, Marks and Spencers. Now, you, you know that I've got a bit of a downer on um, supermarket beer, usually because it's brewed by Marston's, and usually because it's shit. Um, I've just tried the Saison that was brewed by the Arbor Brewery in Bristol for Marks and Spencers, and that was really nice. So, and, and Marks and Spencers do, do know their beer. They do um, the... Uh, McKellar stuff and the Beavertown stuff and the Conan stuff and uh, they also stock Mean Time which is fucking shit that brewery should give up they're fucking useless anyway rant over uh, let's try this stuff what is it it is a pale ale or sorry an India pale ale uh, that is brewed by um, Adnams as I say it's 4% um, it boasts American hops uh, full of uh, citrus and hoppy notes according to them and uh, it says to drink cold but not too cold because you'll miss all the flavours doesn't say whether it's an east coast or a west coast but let's get it open and let's see what is going on it is a 330ml can and as I say it is 4% what are we getting on the nose out of the can oh yeah getting a little bit of um, grapefruit citrus on that smells like a, a west coast so I'm assuming this is going to be quite clear and be quite hoppy let's get it into the glass and see what's going on yeah that looks like a west coast it's well imitating the west coast style anyway um, it's see-through it's amber it's got a two finger head on it uh, there's light carbonation in that, not a great deal. What's on the nose in the glass? Yeah, more of the same. Citrus, resin, a little bit of pine. Hmm, smells okay. They're not massive aromas, so I'm not expecting massive flavours, but let's try it anyway. Mm. Typical West Coast, that is. Not much malt. Very crisp. Dry. <clears throat> um, oh, I'll tell you a lie, there's malt coming through now. Little bits of uh, biscuit malt coming through on that, but it, it's overwhelmingly hoppy. Uh, grapefruit but not um, not massive grapefruit they're quite subtle and there's quite a bit of resin on that and a little bit of pine little woody type flavors on that it 
it's okay, but it doesn't stand out as being amazing. Um, to be honest, I've tried quite a few beers that resemble this type of flavour. Um, but it's not doing anything wrong, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a drinkable, nice IPA. Um, it's of a West Coast style. It's got lots of hops, more than fruit and citrus, but there is that sort of grapefruity, resiny, sort of hoppy type flavour that you see on West Coast, rather than the fruity, sort of sweeter, slightly sweeter style you get on the East Coast. I must say, I do prefer the East Coast to the West Coast style, but this, this is quite okay. Hmm, that's not bad. It's good to see that Marks and Spencers are putting a bit more of an effort into their sort of beer tasting. But, as I always say, it's it's always, with these supermarket beers, it's always a fine line. I mean, I suppose any craft brewer, really, it's always a fine line what you can, ingredients you can put in, cost, and what you can get back. I, you know, I do understand that, but a lot of brewers do it, do that, and they do it well. well one that springs to mind is Cloudwater. Now, Cloudwater put fantastic ingredients into their beers, and they are exceptional beers, but they are really expensive. I've book just bought three of their beers to review three beers and it came to 22 pound right there was a, an imperial stout which i'm hoping i can compare with the luscious from the um uh, alchemist brewery um there was an ipa that i've tried before in a real ale pub which i it blew my socks off it was so good and uh, there's another one as well but that yeah that came to 22 pound including postage so that is, I'd like to think, reassuringly expensive, but of course, Cloud Water are top of their game. I'd say they're one, probably one of the best craft brewers in, in Britain at the moment. They're exceptional. Um, Marks and Spencer's, obviously, that <laughs> they're brewed under their own brand, is not going to be anywhere near that league. But they are charging quite a bit for their own brand beers compared to Lidl's. But you get what you pay for. Lidl's stuff, you know, brewed by Marston's, is fucking shit. It is, it's fucking crap. I mean, they, they do an orange. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, but they do an orange one, and it's basically just any old cheap shit, you know, shipyard, whatever, with a, a squeeze of, you know, concentrated orange juice in it, and they're calling it some type of fruity IPA. It's like fucking bullshit us. You know, people are buying this thinking, oh yeah, this is, you know, I'm drinking an IPA. You're not. You're drinking a fucking abomination. But, I digress. But it was like, but it's only £1.09. So, you know, if if you're happy drinking that, in fair, or £1.25, if you're happy drinking that, then, then fine. But, I can, I'm not trying to be, well, I suppose I am. I'm, you know, people might think I'm a beer snob, but I refuse to, and I always say it, you know, <laughs> at the end of the videos, life really is too short to be drinking shitty beer. But getting back on subjects, supermarket beer really is hit and miss, and uh, Marks and Spencer seem to be doing reasonably well. And this is a fairly respectable IPA. I mean, it doesn't really do massive amounts for me, but there's nothing in that that I would say, you know, is bad or a void. So what would I give it? I would give this. And I do like Adams. They do some good beers. Um, I'd, all, all in all, price considered as well, I'd give it a seven, just a seven. Um, this was over two pounds, so once you get over that mark, you 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 want a bit of quality. And I think this is just about at the right right price point. Any more, and I'd have said, you know, taking a piss, but. This is just about right. For what you've paid for it, you're getting, more or less, I think, in my opinion, a beer of that value. 
and would I recommend it? Well, see, this is where they go wrong. Again, Marks and Spencers, you know, they do this stuff, but they also stock the McKellar stuff. Now, the McKellar stuff is really, really good. So, are you going to go for the McKellar stuff, or are you going to go for their own brand? Well, that's for me is a no-brainer. It's going to be McKellar all day long. They also do the, the Kona stuff, as I say. That, that's really nice too. And they also do, um, well, meantime, they, 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 fuck, they can fuck off their shit. Um, who's the other one? Uh, I can't remember the other one. And I said it earlier in the video, but I'd rather go for them than their own brand. But anyway, it's up to you. If you want to try one and they've got them on special offer, then yeah, go for it. But there's better in Marks and Spencers for the money or not far off from the money. But this ain't bad. So yeah, 7 out of 10 and recommended with caution and remember beer is working class champagne